morning, friends. Uh, we are, where are we at? It is June 4th, and it is a very gloomy day. Uh, we actually have a tropical storm weather here in Florida. A little bit of a tropical storm that developed out in the Gulf. And we are headed down to Port Charlotte, Florida to see our good friends, Fred and Jody. Uh, we are going to be doing some uh, work on Coles 73 Triumph TR6. Uh, Cole will actually be uh, the star today. Uh, we are going to teach Cole how to do a valve adjustment. And we are also going to torque the, the head down to the block, uh, make sure that's torqued to spec. And then we're going to drain out the old oil and put in the proper 30 weight oil. And uh, Cole will be doing all that. So uh, I will be the cameraman today while Cole is doing all the work. So. Uh, we appreciate uh, all your support, and please make sure you click that subscribe button. Thank you. Well, here we are, folks, in soggy Northport, Florida. And we are down here uh, working on Cole 73 Triumph TR6. We made it. And uh, as you can see here, we have this beautiful engine just waiting for us to do some work to it today. And uh, Fred's eating one of the great donuts we got from our local donut shop. And uh, Cole, what's the plan of attack this morning? What, do we, what would we like to do? Uh, probably the uh, valve adjustment. Okay, so we're gonna have to take the valve cover off. We'll, we'll get the book out, torque wrench, and we will start working on a valve adjustment. This will be Cole's first valve adjustment. Uh, my first valve adjustment was uh, sometime last year, uh, which we actually did on this engine. Uh, but we decided it was time to also um, uh, do it again. Um, and Cole, what else do you think we're going to try to do today? Uh, an oil change, okay. And I know Fred's doing some research. He wanted to add a, um, a block seal uh, to help to try to address uh, a little bit of weeping oil issue we have here on the driver's side. So um, let's, uh, let's get started. Well, good morning, Mr. Schmidt. How are you, sir? Fine, fine. Today we're gonna to go ahead and do a valve adjustment and retorque the head. So we're gonna start off by pulling the spark plugs out. Okay. Take the valve cover off and open it up a little bit and then we'll do some work on it. All right, so I have a question for you that this seems to plague people. I noticed that you're just able to pull the uh, spark plug wires right out, but then you have people that use a spark plug puller. Uh, what's the difference? Why do some people use a puller and some people just use their hands? I have no idea. <laughs> so, so it's just, is, is it just a reach thing or is there a possibility that you could actually pull the wire, the cover right off the wire and, and stay, stay on there? Uh, I never really had any trouble. Just grab it by the boot and pull it. Should be good. Yeah, maybe it's a reach thing. Yeah. Okay, I noticed you're disassembling. You just disassembled the, um, the, um, I mean, it's all off there. So you do all that to be able to get to where you're at? Yeah. Um, cap it. And you're gonna pull those out. Um, and you pull those out so that the uh, you can spin the crank freely yeah, so, so we can, can make the, val the valve adjustment. Okay, right. cool, cool, exactly. cool, cool. Exactly. Well, Cole, you're gonna have to get in there and start taking spark plugs out because today's your show. This is your show, kid. A good show, or as Ed Sullivan would say, a good shoe. <laughs> All right, kid, get to work. So, Fred, what do you have Cole doing right now? He's pulling the plugs. Pulling those plugs. So, it's so like this? Yeah, you can, it's a ratchet, so you can ratchet it back. See that? Oh, okay. And sometimes you just might not be able to spin it with your hand. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, he learns quick. Well go. done, kid. Well done. Then next we're going to, what, take the valve cover and off? You can, now you can go ahead and disconnect this. And just, just spin, spin it, it with your hand. hand. There you go. Well done. Good job, Cole. Well, between Fred and Cole, we now have the valve cover off. Spark plugs are out. And we have the inside of a Triumph TR6 straight six engine. So it looks well lubed, Fred. Yeah, it looks like it's getting good oil. It's getting good oil, which is a good thing. So, um, so question for you guys: um, What's first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Do you
do you adjust the valves first or do you torque the 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 head to the to the block? What's first, Fred? I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, retorque the head, I think. Okay. We'll do that first. Okay. And just for uh, those out here that don't know, what where are the bolts that you torque? Is that this bolt? Well the obvious ones are this right, one right, here, right. and then there's here, here. Okay. And Good. these all need to be we gotta take we gotta take this off. Okay. We'll take this rocker assembly off. Okay. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Great. So one of the things that we discovered in the process is that we have a circle B head. Um, we understand that this is more of a desirable head. I know that our friend uh, David in Canada, uh, I believe he has that on his TR250. And um, we're not really sure why it's more desirable. I'm sure one of our fans out there can uh, school us on that, but uh, we do know it's more desirable. So we're happy we have that. Yes. Well, Fred, we've got this uh, opened up. The, we got the rockers off. Uh, you're able to kind of look down into the engine. Is there anything right now that bothers you or anything that you're surprised about so no, far? Nothing glaringly, no. Everything looks pretty much normal. So okay. We'll just do a, a torque. We torque on the head and we'll see if we can't stop that weeping. Yeah, and uh, we're hoping that's going to be very interesting to st see um, where we're at with the torque spec on these uh, bolts. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see how that turns out. What do you think, Cole? Got any bets going on this? What do you think? My guess is that somebody has been into this motor before, Fred. Right. We've seen signs that somebody was into this motor prior to us. So uh, I'm going to take a guess that they probably are not within spec. So we'll see. The head bolts. It's a lot of feel to them. I mean, you gotta just. A lot of times when I rebuild the motor, you to torque it down once, and then you wait a day, torque it down again. You know, that's why we just wait five minutes and then do it over, over again. So what we've discovered is of the seven bolts on the side that was leaking, four of the bolts were not torqued to spec, and two of them were actually relatively loose. Uh, on this other bank here, where there's been no leak at all. Uh, none of them were uh, out of spec. They all were right right within uh, the torque spec. Uh, we torqued it, according to the book, 65 to 70. You know, since this is an older motor, we decided to stay on the side of 65. So as Fred said, we'll come back in about uh, five minutes and uh, try to retorque it and see what happens. All right, so Cole's gonna call out the numbers. Got it. Okay. Got it. That's the first one that moved, I remember. There you go. Nice. Ready? Uh, four. Four. Okay. Five. Fred, is it possible when you start tightening other parts, does that cause other bolts to possibly need more torquing? If you have enough of a loose bolt could it yeah. cause the other other part of the head to you know that's what's good okay six because that was one of the ones that was loose I yep that, i think that was one of them that was real bad yeah those these ones in the back six. or over here are not doing anything uh, right there that was six okay. good Well, gentlemen, we've had quite the productive morning. We've learned some stuff. Uh, we learned we have a Circle B head, which we didn't know we had. Uh, we learned that we had four of the seven bolts that affix the head to the block uh, were loose. So we got those within torque spec. We, spec we torqued it at 65 twice. And then Fred, we ended up at 67. 67 on, for the final torque. Yeah. 67 for the final torque. Then when we went and put the um, the rocker back on and uh, spec got that to spec, which I think was 24, Fred, on the, the rocker. 24 to 26 was the torque on that. Um, uh, we, we discovered that our last valve adjustment was then off because we don't think it was ever torqued originally correctly. So probably because this motor had been thrown in and God only knows what was done to it in the past. 
So now we've done the, we've uh, torqued the bolts to the, the block. We've done the valve adjustment and now we have the valve cover back on. Uh, we're getting ready to do an oil change and then we're gonna try firing her up and see what happens. Well, that was an exercise in futility. That was awful. We still don't have the filter out. God bless the person who came up with the filter adapter because we are going to be buying one now that we've had to fight with it and then get the move the slave cylinder so we could get the damn thing out. Ridiculous. Yeah, the next oil change, you can put it in there. There you go. Fred's going to be like, I'm watching the next time. I ain't doing this shit again. Right, Cole? Cole, you're in. You're in, Cole. I'll tell you the most important thing about that canister filter. What's that? Is the gasket, the O-ring, that goes into the seating of the block. Yes. I learned a lesson a long time ago. The first one of the first cars I had was the GT6, and I decided to change oil. And so I had, this was probably 1975, and I went ahead and I took the old filter and the canister off, the same thing, and I just went, okay, great. You know, and I took the O-ring and I put it in, not realizing that there was one in there already. Oh, shit. The one that was in there had been in there for so long, it was really, really hard. And it felt to me like it was part of the block. Right. Well, I put it together and started it up and I lost five quarts of oil just like that on dad's driveway. He wasn't happy. <laughs> oh, I guess not. <laughs> oh, shit. No. So th that's a great point because if it's hard now, I bet this one's going to be, after sitting for 30 years, I bet it's going to be the same way. Yeah, because you can't, um, it feels like even if you get in there with a, you know, a pick. Sharp, it yeah, feels ice like pick. The steel, you're hitting the steel. It's so hard. It's oh, so boy. Hard. Oh, boy. Something to look forward to, Cole. <laughs> All right, Fred. So here now the magic begins. What are we? What's the last court to go in? I always use this. It's really good. Good lubricant properties. To it. Okay. And this is just good. Really good care and feeding for the motor. It is. Okay. Cool. It is. And put that one in. So we uh, uh, purposely filled it a quart low and then we'll use the Lucas uh, for the final cork. And if you like to read upside down, there it is. <laughs> watch the oil pressure go up when you put that in. Oh baby, very good. All right, well now it's Cole's turn for his maiden voyage. So we'll get a little video of Cole going out for his maiden voyage in his 73 Triumph TR6. There you go. She doesn't look good, but she sounds good. <laughs> Ooh, smooth. Have fun. All right, Jody, I think I hear him coming. So let's see if Cole's got a big shit eating grin on his face. I'll bet he does. At least he doesn't have the exhaust in his face like he did the last time, so let's see here. Oh, I hear him. About around the corner here. There they come. Ooh, Fred's winding it out. Oh, what a beautiful sight to see that thing run again after 30 years. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive!